Do they have got some easy plus and minus ideas for adding or subtracting layers to layering stencils and layering dies to give you more options when you're using these craft room basics? Let me show you. I'm starting with a rainbow of Catherine Pooler inks and this new Blooming Halo layering stencil from Crafty Meraki. I'm working my way through the layers, slightly moving where I'm putting each color each time to get a blended look and also to give more definition to the different layers in the stencil design. Whenever you've got something like this pretty stencil that feels very dainty, you can easily give it a more graphic look by using a rainbow of colors and not worrying about getting a realistic look. Next, I've got this new Luna Layering Butterfly die set. It has a solid base, then a layer with small holes, and then a top layer with larger holes to give you a pretty dimensional look and let the colors peek through from each layer. I'm blending the same rainbow of colors onto the middle layer, and you can see how pretty this is with a white base and a white top. Or you can collapse the layers by using the same middle layer as a stencil on the white base, and then do the same with the top layer. So not only do you get color on that delicate top layer, you've now got a one layer butterfly on the base that looks like it has layers. Add in a couple of black pieces to the white pieces and the rainbow pieces, and there's a ton of combinations you can create to customize your butterflies. I used my stenciled butterfly on my card panel, and I added that rainbow blended middle panel as well, so that when the wings of the stenciled butterfly are up a little bit, you can see the color underneath. That just gives it a little more definition. I added a simple stamp sentiment from Blooming Birthday to the bottom, You Brighten My Day, which I think is perfect for this colorful card. And of course, I added the full rainbow of dewdrops in the corresponding area of my rainbow wreath, and I used some of the clear Aurora dewdrops on the butterfly's body. Now let's go back to that wreath stencil. This time I chose a very pretty and dainty color combination of pinks, greens, and aqua, and I blended all the inks through. This stencil set doesn't have a matching stamp set, but if you want the look of a stamped outline, just grab a thin marker like this Copic Multiliner. This one's a 0.5, and using only the stencils with the largest holes, trace around each shape. This first layer had the roses and some of the little berries. Then I found the layer that would outline the aqua leaves and I did that. Then I did the one that outlined the green leaves and the last berries. I didn't do this with the stencils that added the details to the roses and leaves. When I was finished and I took a look, I didn't really love how those roses had open edges. So I just added my own extra lines by connecting any little gaps in the edges. And then that left me some little white areas in the roses. So I went back in and just blended small circles of pink ink onto each rose. I trimmed the panel down to a square and then I remembered that the wreath has a matching die. So I lined that up and I cut it out. I popped up my now square wreath with some foam tape onto a white panel, which gave me some nice dimension. For my sentiment, I chose a big graphic birthday die cut in black, and I cut the smaller script wishes from some white cardstock, which I covered in the dark pink ink. When I popped that onto the card, it disappeared a bit, so I cut another one from black cardstock and I trimmed it so I could create a faux shadow by offsetting the two die cuts on the bits of the word that weren't already sitting on the black birthday word. Then I added some of the apricot dewdrops in the recessed area of the card. This gives almost a fake shaker look. And there's another new layered butterfly die, the Emperor Wings die set, and I have a different idea for this one, a shaped tag. I started with a piece of white cardstock which I scored and folded in half, and then I put the die so that the wings are extended over the top fold just a little bit. The wide horizontal shape of these wings make this a great technique for this die, and once I ran it through my die cutting machine a couple of times to get all the way through both layers of cardstock, I was left with this pretty little card. To add color, I masked off the back butterfly and I put aqua ink on the front. This will peek through the holes in the top two layers and I didn't worry about blending it with anything else. For the middle layer, I put the lighter green all over and then I came back in with the darker green in the center to give the look of some dimension. And then I did the same with the top layer and the two pink inks, the lighter one all over and the darker one in the center fading out to the edges to create a shadow that looks like the wings go down a little bit in the center. I think this color combination has an almost roaring 20s feel, which works well with the Art Deco feel of the butterfly. To finish it off, I added the body and then some clear dewdrops around the wings. This would make such a pretty gift tag or even a place setting card at a tea party. 
All these products are new and available now at Crafty Meraki, and I've put links down below in the video description. But of course, these simple techniques for getting the looks of more or fewer layers with layering stencils and dyes will work with any similar products you already have. Thanks so much for watching. See you next time.